Okay, so we'll begin in about a minute or so. Uh, we'll still allow people to come in as it happens. But uh, again, welcome to SG STEM Circuit Breaker Talk and Trivia. So with my co-host Kanan uh, and Marcus, uh, we are going to start our dialogue session with Prof. Ko Lianpin from NUS. So before we begin, we are going to be muting everyone. Uh, but we are, and we are not going to allow you to unmute during the course of the about 10 minutes of chat. Uh, this is just because if there is, say, an ambulance uh, coming passing nearby or there are dogs that are barking, we don't want um, the sound to disturb the rest of the people who are listening in. But at the end of 10 minutes, uh, we will open up the floor and then chat for questions. Uh, so like Kanan mentioned, we're going to uh, try to do this systematically. We have over 170 signups. So um, if you could use the raise hand feature, we look up for you, or put your question in the chat box. Um, will come to you as uh, first come first serve basis. So we can't guarantee that everyone gets their questions answered too, but we'll try. Uh, after that, we would have a trivia. So if you haven't filled up the trivia, your trivia team name as well as your beneficiary, please go to uh, tinyurl system trivia uh, to fill that up before we begin. So. Let's, I'm going to be muting everyone. Yep. And also, I just want to say, if you guys have got questions, right, just put it in the private chat. Because when I'm screen, screen sharing, I don't think I can see if the hands pop up on my side screen. So just feel free to like drop your questions privately to any of the hosts. Thank you. And we hope you have fun. Welcome Dr. Ko Lianpin, who is Professor for Conservation Science, Technology and Policy at the Department of Biological Sciences at NUS. And um, Lianpin has just returned from overseas on the Singapore Returning Scientist Scheme after an illustrious decade-long career overseas in academia and leading a conservation organization. So uh, Lianpin, maybe you could tell us more about yourself uh, to the audience, please. Um, yeah, happy to. Um, but before I do that, I just want to thank uh, you and uh, Kanan and the rest of the organizing team uh, for inviting me to, to be the guinea pig for this, uh, this uh, very uh, innovative and uh, I guess very appropriate uh, um, session, SG STEM. Um, so, as uh, Marcus mentioned earlier, I have been away from Singapore for the last uh, 16 years or so and have just been back uh, since late March, just in time to enjoy the uh, stay home notice uh, uh, that, that was, was implemented um, right, right before I, I left uh, Seattle. And in fact, Marcus and I were at the same hotel and uh, enjoying our 14 days uh, of, of uh, relative uh, solitude in, in the hotel. Um, but it was, it's great to be back. I'm very excited to, uh, to lead this new initiative. Um, I have been uh, a conservation scientist for much of my career. I tried to be a bit of a practitioner for the last two to three years. And uh, happy to say now I'm back, uh, back in academia. Um, yeah, so happy to see um, what I can share with you guys today. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Thank, you. Thank you for that. <laughs> Do you want me to continue or is oh just something? I think I think, I think, <laughs> I think having an issue somewhere. So yeah. Okay, right. Um, so, um, sorry, just give us a sec. Like I said, there's a lot of things to iron out. So yeah. Maybe maybe I could begin first then. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. So um, maybe Lianpin, could you tell us more about your plans in in Singapore? What's what are the exciting things you're planning to do here? 
Yeah, sure. So, um, so I've just just joined NUS um, and will be setting up a new center for nature-based climate solutions. Um, uh, so this is this will be a new university level research center at NUS. Uh, the whole point of setting this up is to make it a focal point for research and activities related to nature-based climate solutions or, or just clim climate issues in general. Um, it's not restricted to, to NUS researchers. Um, in fact, I have been um, reaching out to many of my colleagues from other universities, um, including uh, SNU and NTU, um, as well as people in the civil society, so nonprofits around Singapore. Um, the, the center has two main mandates. You know, the first is to produce um, policy relevant, cutting edge science to help inform our national policies on climate strategies and actions, um, and also those in the region as well. Um, and the second mandate is to, to build capacity in Singapore and the region um, in, in climate science and, and policy. Um, and we are planning to do that by not just training PhD students and postdocs and early career researchers, but also by you know, proactively engaging with um, government and corporate sector leaders um, to bring them up to speed um, and help um, you know, inform them about the latest um, climate science and you know, uh, climate policy issues uh, globally um, through public seminars and workshops and, and also uh, new master's degree programs. So those are the two main mandates of the center. Um, at the moment, um, we have about eight to nine uh, principal investigators who have agreed to join the center from around from, from different faculties and departments at NUS, and around another five to six um, affiliate researchers from NTU and SNU who have also kindly uh, agreed to come on board. At the same time, we are also uh, actively recruiting for new tenure track faculty to, to increase our capacity in some areas that, that um, we want to strengthen and that we want to invest in. Um, so I think by the end of the year, we will be able to launch the center with a team of around 50 to 60 PIs, principal investigators, postdocs, uh, research staff, and students. Um, yeah, maybe I'll stop there and yeah, let you guys ask me questions or um, you know, do whatever you have planned for the rest of the program. That's a really big team. So um, one thing that it's in, in the title uh, and one of your expertise is to use um, technology to answer conservation questions. And now we have a, a large part of your research or uh, solution that is directed toward its uh, climate change. So how, how would, could you give us an example of how technology would be used to solve climate change issues? Um, yeah, yeah, sure. So, so one of the, uh, the immediate uh, things that, that a few of us at the center are uh, doing is to actively engage with, like I said, the, the public and corporate sectors to understand where the leads are, where the, the knowledge and the science, science gaps are. And what, one of the biggest uh, gaps that we have identified is uh, in terms of understanding the potential of nature-based climate solutions in the region. So there's a lot of, um, I guess, global level analysis of how nature-based solutions could help us um, address our you know, climate challenge, you know, including um, reducing emissions or uh, protecting carbon stocks and so on. Um, but I think there's still a lot of work to be done. And the first thing that we need to do is to be able to downscale some of those uh, analysis uh, 
to understand, to help us understand what the potential here is in our region, the Southeast Asia and, and more broadly the Asia Pacific region, and also to understand the limitations. So in order to do that, um, we are uh, pursuing a few different uh, uh, approaches. One of them is to um, to, to invest in uh, spatial, some spatial prioritization analysis, um, bringing together different data layers, biophysical, um, land use, uh, forest cover, um, socioeconomic, uh, and, and other uh, relevant spatial layers. Uh, put them together, match them up, uh, run some economic analysis to try to understand what the opportunities are uh, in the region, uh, not just for addressing climate change, but issues, but also to understand some of the core benefits. And also very importantly, to understand what new economic opportunities that might be um, um, in, in the region. Uh, so that's at the biggest scale, I guess, at the regional scale. At, at a more local scale or landscape scale, we, we are also exploring ways of using uh, uh, remote sensing of, uh, at that scale. So, so drones, for example, to, to develop new ways of monitoring, of mapping and monitoring uh, some of these uh, solutions, uh, particularly in terms of um, uh, mapping the potential of uh, for example, forest sites for sequestering and storing carbon and monitoring uh, reforestation sites over time um, to see, um, yeah, the, to monitor sequestration rates and so on. So but there are lots of opportunities definitely for using technology in, in, in helping us to understand uh, the potential and limitations of, of nature-based solutions in this region. It sounds really exciting. It's um using very sophisticated techniques like imagery, set imaging, as well as drones to answer these questions. Um, but for the benefit of uh, our participants today, could you explain to us um, what exactly are nature-based solutions and how does it differ from um, other kinds of solutions or the traditional solutions? Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, over the last couple of years, there have been a series of landmark um, research papers um, that have shown that, you know, at, at least at the global scale and in certain regions around the world, um, nature-based solutions, so-called nature-based solutions, can contribute to, at the global level, uh, about a third of the carbon mitigation that we need uh, for us to, to achieve uh, the targets of the Paris Climate Agreement. So these nature-based solutions would include quite a broad range of, of uh, approaches, including uh, protecting forests um, to, to protect the carbon stocks that are captured uh, in, in the biomass of those, uh, those forests. Um, they include reforestation, afforestation. So for example, planting trees on lands that were previously forested or even where there weren't trees before. Um, it also includes um, improving our management of plantations, agriculture, uh, pulp and paper plantations. It includes uh, improving our uh, rangeland practices, how we put our uh, um, cattle out to pasture and, and things like that. All of those uh, uh, approaches can, in one way or another, help us either sequester carbon dioxide from the atmosphere or protect the existing carbon stocks that are locked away in, in the biomass of, of those uh, uh, vegetation. So those very broadly are what people mean when they say, when they refer to uh, nature-based climate solutions. That's cool. Um, maybe it's time to open up uh, questions to the floor. We've got one first question from um, Siva asking, where would you physically be based when you are here? <laughs> physically be based in NUS, of course. Uh, as Marcus mentioned right at the top of the, the session, uh, I am based uh, in the Department of Biological Sciences. Um, 
Yeah, for the moment, until until we are able to locate a, a physical space for the center, uh, hopefully by the end of the year. Okay. Uh, next, we have a question from uh, Shankar Anantanarayanan. He's asking, will the importance of nature-based climate solutions be communicated to the residents of Singapore? And what are the strategies that are planned? Yeah, sure. Um, definitely. So, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, we are we are very we have plans to very proactively engage with with wider society, you know, through uh, public and private sector, civil society, and so on. Um, we are also uh, planning to organize public workshops and seminars, so inviting um, speakers from around the world who are work, who are actively working on. Um, on, on research related to nature-based climate solutions to come to Singapore, to NUS, to speak about their work and, and also about um, just climate policies in general. So the center has, um, has plans for those and, and we have the resources to, to organize uh, the, those kinds of outreach activities for, for the wider society in Singapore. Okay. Um, let's see, I have another question here from Amy. Will there be studies done on below ground carbon storage? Uh, yeah, that's a great question, uh, for sure. Uh, not just, okay, not, not just below ground carbon storage, but also um, actually above ground carbon storage in some of the ecosystems or habitats um, that may have not been um, well studied yet. Um, so for example, in terms of blue carbon, there is, there's a lot of uh, interest um, among the public and private sectors to understand how they might be able to invest in blue carbon projects around the region, you know, both in terms of, both, both for the purpose of uh, meeting their climate goals, but also to explore new economic opportunities um, and in terms of blue carbon, um, the most well-known ecosystems are you know, mangroves and perhaps seagrass, but there are also other coast ecosystems and, and habitats that are equally important and, and, and may have potential to be uh, uh, useful for, for addressing our climate uh, impacts. Now, for example, a microalgae, um, seaweeds, and, and also coral reefs uh, to some extent. As, as those, those of us who have uh, studied biology or, or environmental science in general, we know that ecosystems, especially these marine, coastal marine ecosystems are all very interconnected and interdependent. So eventually we would need to understand not just mangroves and seagrasses, but how they interact uh, and exchange materials uh, with, and, and energy with the other uh, uh, adjacent ecosystems. So there's a lot, there's, there's definitely a lot of scope for, for research in this area um, across different biomes, terrestrial and marine. Um, and so we are also actively recruiting new PhD students and have already done so uh, actually, uh, but there will be more, uh, definitely more opportunities in the future. Okay. Um, let's see, next one we have it from CKH. Um, are there any plans to work with public agencies uh, like MEWR, NPARKS, PUB, etc.? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we have already started engaging with, um, with the public sector um, and the corporate sector. Um, I've only been back for a month um, and it's a little bit challenging to, to be able to to engage with them uh, under these circumstances, but we have done so uh, over Zoom and Skype and so on. Um, mm -hmm. So definitely Empires will be uh, one of our close partners, uh, newer as well. Um, but, but also corporates like, uh, you know, SDC, Sentosa, um, perhaps Tomasek, and some of the other um, uh, stakeholders who are also very interested in nature-based climate solutions. All right, that's nice. Um, next, we have one from Anne Sophie. Ooh, a spicy question, I like this. Why do you think climate change is denied by people when it is visible in many places? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? Okay, um, why do you think climate change is denied by people when it is visible in many places? 
I don't think that's uh, completely true. I don't think it's denied by people. If you mean people as in everyone, I think there definitely are climate deniers and skeptics, but I think the vast majority of, of people do understand and do, uh, yeah, do see the effects of, of climate change. Mm -hmm. um, in, in, in some societies, in, and perhaps in some segments of society, um, there, 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 there are lots of misinformation and disinformation, and, and perhaps that's why those people are, uh, are skeptical or are in denial. Um, there, there's also a lot of vested interest in not doing anything about climate change, and those people with those vested interests may have um, uh, a reason to to produce those kinds of and spread those kinds of uh, misinformation and disinformation. So, but I think I'm I'm optimistic. I, I think over the last decade or two, uh, things have changed for the better. Uh, I think governments around the world have um, recognized the importance of addressing climate change. Corporates are also turning it. Uh, the corner, they are even looking at uh, new economic opportunities in, uh, in climate solutions that they could potentially invest in. Um, so I think generally, um, I'm very optimistic and I don't think that is, uh, uh, yeah, that is a big issue anymore. Okay. It's, it's glad that's not an issue anymore. Um... Next, we have a question from Kanan Jeraman. Uh, how will the center use the work being done by Project Drawdown on Exponential 360? Hmm. Um, yeah, definitely. Actually, uh, that, that's, that's a very uh, yeah, timely question as well because we just hired someone who, was a, who is a Project Drawdown fellow uh, from the US and she will be, she's, she's kind of Simon and she'll be uh, joining my team, our team uh, as a postdoctoral post research fellow. Um, and I think she was responsible for writing one of the chapters in, in the, the edited book uh, that's been published or will be published by Project Drawdown. Um, yeah, definitely we will be working with um, experts all around the world, not just uh, with uh, that organization of uh, Drawdown. Um, there's, a, like I said, there's a lot of uh, scope for, for research and therefore a lot of scope for collaboration as well. But I do want to also um, take this opportunity to, to note that um, in, in this particular region, in, in our region of Southeast Asia and Asia Pacific, there are, there are certain unique conditions or, or contexts that may be different from other regions. And so in many ways, we have to we have to come up with our own solutions that are acceptable, you know, that are socially acceptable, economically acceptable, politically acceptable for us, for people in this region. And that, that, that is not, that, that requires um, a, a good understanding of, of, of factors across the board, not just the science, but also the, the social economic factors, the cultural factors, uh, the geopolitical factors. And that's what the center is, is aiming to do. So we will be a multidisciplinary center. We will engage with people uh, with, with complementary expertise and interests um, and their priorities um, to help develop the science and, and the solutions that we need. Okay. Um... Right, since we are going to be like running short on time, I'm just going to, I've, I've got so much of questions here. I've got like over 10 of them. I'm just going to handpick a few. Uh, for the rest of you whose questions don't get featured, right, I can suggest that you can um, send them directly uh, to Professor Ko at his Twitter, I guess. They can contact you there. Yeah, sure. Yeah, or if not, maybe later we might put some of the questions up on Twitter and then we can get him to answer it and you guys can check Twitter and find them out there. So um, let me just pick a few more questions here. Sorry if your questions do not get picked. Okay, um, I've got one from Sinway. Will the current COVID-19 pandemic affect the efforts to address climate change issues? Yes, for sure. <laughs> it has already affected uh, uh, climate issues globally. You know? um, well, the, the, the COP26 conference is 
is uh, is postponed. That's that's sort of that's the biggest impact I think uh, in terms of the, the international community's efforts to to address uh, to address climate issues um, mm -hmm. at, at the global scale. Um, and 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 also because of the uh, shutdown and the, the economic impacts uh, across the across the world, um, I think a lot of the investments, committed investments in the, in, in climate actions. Um, may be affected uh, in, in the coming months and then we, we won't know until until um, until we get uh, okay. uh, get to the to the other uh, uh, yeah anyway yeah okay um next we have a question from nazri is there a way for an average citizen like members of the general public to contribute with regards to nature-based solutions um yeah i think there, there are lots of opportunities to to get involved um I think Singapore has been doing this actually for a long time already. You know? uh, I mean, for many of us, even as kids, we remember tree planting, right? Every, every year there will be tree planting and, and it's, it's always, almost imbued into our, our national psyche. You know, we, we have been very uh, proud of, of, of our garden city and so on. So in many ways, Singaporeans are already, uh, uh, have been already practicing many of the approaches and have, have already uh, been, been involved in nature-based climate solutions, for example, by planting trees and, and mm -hmm. gardening and, and yeah, and uh, yeah, just, just generally, generally um, in, in, in keeping our city clean and green for the last couple of decades. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, let's do two more questions and then we'll move to the trivia. All right, uh, from Lester, what are the possible local limitations of nature-based solutions for climate change? Um, yeah, there are lots of, uh, there's potentially lots of limitations at the regional level. Uh, so for example, when, when we talk about actions or strategies that involve land use, um, as is the case for nature-based climate solutions, they also will involve people, people's lives and people's livelihoods. And, and when people's lives and livelihoods are involved, um, there will be trade-offs. There will be, uh, there may be, there probably will be conflicting priorities. You know? So for example, if we, if we decide to, if we want to protect a forest or say a patch of mangroves for the, the, the services that it provides for, climate mitigation, for uh, coastal protection and so on, we, we may also be uh, sacrificing or compromising um, other people's priorities to develop that piece of land for other purposes, uh, um, to, to develop the country's economy, to uh, elevate the uh, uh, standard of living for the, the communities around the area. Um, it's not always the case, but it's often the case. And, and so there, there are always uh, trade-offs like that that we have to, to consider. Um, yeah, so the, the kind of research that the center is investing in uh, very much also focuses on understanding those kinds of trade-offs and, and costs and opportunity costs. Um, and uh, they will be part of the information that we hope to present to decision makers to help inform their decisions. Okay, right. Uh, right, let's take one last question from the floor. Um, this is from Prema. With the increase in human population, it comes with a higher demand for housing and consumerism. This obviously leads to problems such as deforestation and other damages to the natural environment. How do you approach solutions for climate change while trying to meet the demand of consumerism? Um, I, I guess I'm 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 opt optimistic. <laughs> uh, people who know me know me to be an eternal optimist, I guess. Um, and the silver lining I see from the current COVID situation it's 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 bad. You no, know, it, it has caused a lot of suffering, but but I think in many ways it is forcing us to to reevaluate our priorities, you know, to understand um, what, what, is, what, what is truly essential and what, what are um, extravagance, what, what is essential, what is not essential. Um, so, so I think 
I am hopeful that people will have a better understanding and a better calibration of, of what they really need uh, to consume and therefore what we really need to be producing. Um, and I hope this recalibration can help alleviate some of the pressures that we are facing on the environment um, yeah, for the next couple of years. Okay, excellent. Um, over to you, Marcus. All right, I think that's great. I think it's important to be optimistic uh, in conservation because there's so many things going on. All right, so in this section, before we move on to our trivia, it's what do our guests think? Yeah, we always want to know what, what some of our guests think. Um, and so with this quick fire round, I'm going to ask uh, Liam Ping four questions, or rather four words, and he will respond with the first word or phrase that comes to his mind. Uh, are you ready? Okay. okay. Ready, first one is anyway. <laughs> drones. Drones. Wait, can you, you repeat that? Drones or drones? Drones. Ah, conservation. Climate change. Opportunity. Singapore. Responsibility. Bubble tea. Uh, 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 severely lacking. <laughs> <laughs> right, so you guys have heard uh, Prof Ko and I hope you guys can thank him uh, for for appearing in our SG STEM talk. All right, thanks, thanks very wait much. at the screen. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> Linton. So we're going to move on to our next part, which is the trivia. And we hope that everyone can join in. Um, so like I mentioned, uh, if you go on to our next slide, there will be instructions of how to uh, proceed with uh, the trivia. Yep. Uh, let's see whether this... Okay, that's those the drones. Yes, here we go, trivia. Right, so these are some of the rules because we've got so many people taking part. Uh, it's, initially, we thought we'd just like 30 people and we could check everybody's answers, but uh, not anymore. So um, there are going to be four rounds, including one bonus round. So the theme is CCCB, and we'll get to that in a bit, what that is. Um, but we hope that all players can update the live Google Sheet with your team name. I know people are shy, they don't want to put their names there, right? So if you put your team name um, and the beneficiary you're playing for, how much money do we have in the trivia pot, Kanan? Uh, I, think, I think we've gone uh, over $40 now, the last I checked. Right. So we've got over $40 and based on the stats, uh, stats analysis, we've got over 30% of the participants are playing for Acres. Um, so please list it, uh, list it there right now. And we need you to update the score uh, after every round. And because this will be an honor code system, uh, we can't check everybody's answers, but uh, we request that you take a photo or you could just type out your answers and you take a photo and you send your answers or email your answers uh, after every round with your team name. The team name is important so we can check to sgstem.talktrivia uh, at gmail.com. Right. Uh, we will definitely check the winners because there's money involved uh, and we'll post the donation uh, acknowledgement form on the website somewhere so you can check. Right. So uh, we'll give everyone maybe about two to three minutes to fill just your team name and your beneficiary on the Google Sheet. I'm going to put paste it in the chat box too so you can just yep. copy and paste it. Yep. And we will probably start in like... Uh... Three minutes, we will start the questions. Yep. And also if you guys nice. look through the, if you look, sorry, sorry Marcus, if you guys look through the chat box, right, there are people also answering the questions and they're adding more questions as well. So you guys can look through that as well. Because some of, I didn't manage to go through all of the questions. So yeah, some of the members who are answering the questions. So go for it, look through it as well while we are waiting. I see a lot of uh, flurry of activity on the trivia spreadsheet, so that's great. So there are people playing for uh, TWC2, Cat Welfare Society, Bird Life, Acres, Marine Stewardship Council, uh, JGIS, Acres, Ground Up Initiative, NSS. Oh, that's great. Yep. And uh, so once. once yeah, go on, go on. <laughs> once, once everyone has filled up the sheet, I'm going to sort by. 
uh, name alphabetically so you can find your name much easier. Uh, so I was going to say probably after um, after the, the session is done and once we do the donations, we will put it up on social media platforms. So Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, which was the winning team or winning name and where they donated and how much they donated. And we were going to be this trivia thing, a weekly thing. So you guys pop in for the next week's session. There'll be trivia. Again, you can donate and you can pick a beneficiary as well. So, yeah. All right. We will be starting in a minute. So you guys can prepare your sheets or your notes, whatever you're going to write your answers with. Okay, so there is a typo in the email address. It's supposed to be top trivia, T R I V I A. So that slipped our our uh, yep. attention. So you have to email to sgstem dot top dot trivia. I shall type it in the chat box too. Yep. Thanks for sounding sounding that out, Sinway. Thank you. Okay, so are we? So be, uh, okay. So there will be four rounds. So for the first three rounds, uh, there would be five questions, one point each. So if you're writing this down, please write your team name on a piece of paper and then one, two, three, four, five, your answers, take a photo of it, send it to uh, the email. If you're typing it out, do the same thing, please. Yeah. And, and so, also, um, yeah, uh, if any of you have issues, right, let's say the screens are lagging, if you can't see the questions, just uh, let us know in the chat and I'll, one of us will type the questions in the chat for you guys as well. Because I do realize that sometimes with like so many people, it can be a bit laggy and depending where you live as well. So uh, let us know if you can't see the questions or whatsoever and we'll type in the chat for you in addition to the uh, sheet. Okay, uh, if everyone is good, let's begin. Yep, shall we, Marcus? Yes. All right, let's go. Okay. Right, the first round is creatures. And here we go. Question one. Alligators are native to just two countries. One of them is the US. What is the other country? Gators are native to just two countries. One of them is the US. What is the other country? There's a clue, right? The, the gator in the picture is the gator from the country you're looking for. I, I don't know how much of a clue it is, but it is a clue. So yeah. Oh, someone, uh, Sinway asked, by the way, this is, is this open book? So um, I mentioned there's an honor code. I forgot to mention that please do not use Google or look anywhere for references. So yeah. <laughs> we trust that you uh, use your general knowledge, your impeccable and uh, knowledgeable brain only to answer this. Some of you are playing as a team and that's acceptable too. Okay, so, so uh, yeah. <laughs> a minute to answer the questions. Yep, uh, if you guys are done, let's go for the next one. Oh, I got ahead of myself there. Crows are, a bir are birds of the family Covidae. This includes ravens, jays, jackdaws, right? What is a collective term for a group of crows? Crows are birds of the family Covidae. What is a collective term for a group of crows? So it's Corvide, Corvid, not COVID. Yeah, it's, it's nothing to do with the virus at all. I know a bunch of like uh, uh, crow scientists were kind of like upset because people say, keep saying COVID instead of COVID and they were like, stop blaming the crows. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next one. Oh, if I'm going too fast, right, just pop in the chat and ask me to slow down. Okay, uh, next one. What is... What is the largest, oh, okay, largest piece of primate? Okay, so a few people have asked, where do we put the answers? You guys can put the answers um, on a, where, where did they put the, I, I think you can just write down the answers by yourself and just let us know the answers at the end of each round. So at the end of creatures round, give us the, show us your answers on our email and stuff. So you can and do that. Yeah, everyone will take a photo and send it to us or you can type that on email, send it to us or in notes, send it to us, and then we would ask you to mark your own answers at every round, at the end of every round as well. Yep. So question three, what is the largest living species of primate? Okay. 
Okay, uh, moving on. How many eyes does a honeybee have? How many eyes does a honeybee have? Clue, the answer is in the, in the photo. Oh yeah, most, most of them, you know, we have tried to put clues everywhere, so yeah. Sometimes the clue, the clue is that it's not just, think about it. Okay, uh, let's go to the next one. Um, yep, in 2002, the Nature Society of Singapore invited the public to vote for Singapore's national bird. Which bird was unofficially chosen to be Singapore's national bird? In 2002, the Nature Society of Singapore invited the public to vote for Singapore's national bird. Which bird was unofficially chosen? Okay, we'll give you a minute and we can go on to the next. Uh, yeah, this is the last question for creatures. So you guys can send in your answers to us. And we will carry on. So probably I'll, I'll give you guys like uh, a minute or so to sort it out. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna carry on. Just shout at me in the text box, uh, chat box if you need me to stop. Okay. All right, I've started receiving stuff from people. So we will look through them as well. Yep. First, first two emails are people whose name starts with J. Okay, uh, Marcus, shall I carry on? Uh, maybe wait a little. It might, might take a while to compose an email or, or take yep. a photo and send. Emails are coming in. Yeah, we'll, we'll hold on for a while. Like I said at the start of the thing, right, this is the first session, so we're still ironing stuff out. So thank you for coming for the first session. You guys will be sitting around for quite a bit while I figure out the ropes. But future sessions will be a lot quicker. Okay, so it seems that we have approximately 20 people playing based on the thing. Mm -hmm. And once we get in the tens, we can go on to the next round. So I think we can go on. We've got more yep. than 10 responses. Yep. So you guys can. Yeah. So uh, how this quiz has been done is we're going to do the sessions, mark, do the sections, mark, right? So. So the answers for the first one, first a batch of questions. The other alligator is found in China and it's got the Chinese alligator, which is this little cute guy here. And uh, they can be found at the river safari. At least they were there the last time I checked. So China is where the other alligator is. The other of them, the other bunch of them are in the US. Second, a collective term for a group of crows is murder. So you refer to a group of crows as a murder of crows. Okay. Uh, the largest species of primate is, oops, the largest species of primate is the gorilla. The largest species of living primate is the gorilla. Uh, they are heftier than us, so we are not the largest. And how many eyes does a honeybee have? They have five. So if you look at this image, you guys can see my mouse, right? So they got two major eyes over here. And they got these three smaller eyes arranged in like a rough sort of triangle called oscilli. So one, two, three, four, five. So honeybees have um, five eyes. Uh, okay, um, next question. The unofficial National Bird of Singapore as chosen by the public in a poll by Nature Society Singapore is the Crimson Sunbird. Okay. So the Crimson Sunbird is the unofficial bird of Singapore, national bird of Singapore. Okay, so now we're going to the second round of quiz. We'll, we'll try to go things a bit quick, right? Because I think uh, I'm taking a bit too long. So we'll do it quicker now. And the second round is 
on climate change. So we hope you guys have been listening to Professor Ko's uh, questions and answers earlier. And uh, so, yeah, let's go. Uh, climate change, question number one, which of the following is a greenhouse gas? Which of the following is a greenhouse gas? Number one, carbon dioxide, methane, water vapor, and all of the above. Which of the following is a greenhouse gas, carbon dioxide, methane, water vapor, and all of the above? Okay, we're gonna go to the next question. St. Kitts and Nevis is the country dramatically affected by rising sea levels. How much land has it lost? Nevis, uh, which is one of the Caribbeans, I think, if I remember correctly, is the country most dramatically affected by rising sea levels. How much land has it lost? 30 square kilometers, 60 square kilometers, 90 square kilometers, 120 square kilometers. And I also apologize for people who are uh, joining us from overseas who do not use kilometers as, uh, as your measurement uh, system. In the future quizzes, I will be sure to put in the uh, alternative as well, which I think will be miles. Okay, next question. Weather and climate. Okay, so I've, I've misread uh, it. It's supposed to be weather and climate are the same, not climate change. So weather and climate are the same thing. True or false, weather and climate are the same thing. I apologize for the mistake. Just gonna check and see if anyone's shouting at me to go slower. Okay, nope. So, uh, and uh, I think this is question five. I hope so. Uh, should we keep in track? Let's go. Which of the following is usually not a carbon sink? Which of the following is usually not known to be a carbon sink? Oceans, wetlands, jungles, and deserts. Oceans, wetlands, jungles, and deserts. Which of the following are not usually, it's not usually known to be a carbon sink? Uh, wetlands include stuff like bogs, um, swarms, like our mangroves and stuff like that, they're wetlands. So which of the following is not a carbon sink? Okay. Uh, it, this, this is the fifth question, right? Yes? Yep. Okay, cool. So same thing, clear the answers, send it to us, and we will move on to the next, we'll move on to the answers. Okay, someone wants to know question three, so I'm just gonna scroll up. Uh, this is question three. St. Kitts and Nevis is a country most dramatically affected by rising sea levels. How much land has it lost? Oh wait, have there only been four questions? I apologize, so there's one more question. One, two, three, four. All right, there's one more question. I apologize, people. Um, right, fifth question. How much more carbon dioxide has the ocean absorbed since pre-industrial times? How much more carbon dioxide has the ocean absorbed since pre-industrial times? 20%, 40%, 60%, and 80%. For those people who have already sent me your answers for this one, because I made a mistake, I am really sorry. Just add this in as well. How much more carbon dioxide has the ocean absorbed since pre-industrial times? Okay, uh, if you guys have uh, sent in, Marcus, have we got stuff? Starting to come in and I'm checking your answers for the first round. Okay, yeah, if they're, starting, if they're starting to come in, should I carry on with the other questions? 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead. All right. All right, let's carry on for the third C in our C, 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 B quiz. And, uh, oh, oh, right. Uh, for the question one, which of the following is a greenhouse gas? The answer is all of the above. Um, yep, yeah, it's all of the above. Uh, is they're all greenhouse gases. And for the second question, for certain kids and nevis, they have lost approximately 90 square kilometers of land due to rising sea levels. Okay. Um, are weather and climate the same thing? No, they are not. So the answer is false. Weather and climate are not the same thing. Okay. And which of the following is not usually a carbon sink? It's deserts. So carbon sinks are places that absorb carbon dioxide from the air. So um, oceans, wetlands, and jungles absorb a lot of carbon. Deserts do not do as much. Very few deserts actually absorb carbon. That's why when people do like forest burning and stuff, they say carbon's released because burning a, a carbon sink releases mm -hmm. carbon dioxide back into the air. So um, oceans, wetlands, and jungles are carbon sinks. Deserts mm -hmm. usually not considered carbon sinks. And the last question, how much more carbon dioxide has been absorbed since pre-industrial times by the oceans? 40%. Oceans have absorbed 40% more carbon dioxide since pre-industrial times. Okay, and now uh, next will be the third round. So I'm just gonna go on to the third round. Let's, let's go really quickly. The third round is of course the most recent issue we all have been facing, coronavirus. So the third round will be five questions on coronavirus. Let's go. COVID-19 is the name of the disease caused by the virus SARS-CoV-2. What is the full name of SARS-CoV-2? COVID-19 is the name of the disease caused by the virus SARS-CoV-2. What is the full expansion of SARS-CoV-2? Second question, coronavirus uh, is found in mammals and birds. However, what is the one known species that spreads COVID-19? Coronavirus can be found in mammals and birds. However, what is the one known species that spreads COVID-19? Okay. That's a bit, a bit wordy question. I'm just gonna summarize it for people who are like doing it quickly. Uh, Singapore Circuit Breaker, period started quite recently. However, it's been extended as of uh, last week, two weeks ago. When is this extended circuit breaker period expected to end? When is Singapore circuit breaker period expected to end? Okay, next. How long is the incubation period for coronavirus? How long is the incubation period for coronavirus? For this, I understand that there is like a range. So if you guys can give me like a number smack in the middle, or you can give us a range that we will we'll pick from it. Right, there's one more question. Um, fifth question for the coronavirus round. While COVID-19 is a global problem, there are some countries that have remained infection-free. Name one country. While COVID-19 is a global problem, there are some countries that have remained infection-free. Name one of them. I think there's like 16 to 18 countries. Like one or two of them have been like, are considered, uh, they may or may not have them, they might be hiding stuff, but there are a few countries that are like there. So, so uh, for this question, obviously countries have been adding to the list and, and stuff like that. So let's say from a month ago, as of April, how many countries have remained infection-free? 
because obviously a few countries may have been added in the last few uh, weeks. So how many countries have remained infection free in uh, since of April? Okay, I'm just going to show question one and two for the benefit of people. Yes, I should probably add question numbers the next time so I know what's going on. Question one is, what is the full name of SARS-CoV-2? What is the full name for SARS-CoV-2 is question one. Question two is, what is the one known species that spreads COVID-19? What is the one known species that spreads COVID-19? Okay. Right, does anyone need any questions repeating? If not, you guys can tally up your answers and send them to the chat where Mar uh, to the email where Marcus will uh, look through them. Uh, they're coming in. That's great. Awesome. Awesome. I think they're almost all in. So I think we can move on. So, okay. So we'll go through the uh, questions, uh, the answers really quickly, and then we'll go to the last one. Oh, does anyone want? Okay. Uh, let's go. This is what is the full name for SARS CoV 2, which is Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Syndrome Coronavirus 2. Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2. is what SARS-CoV-2 stands for. And what is the one known species that spreads COVID-19? It's us. We are the known species so far to spread COVID-19. Um, so, yep. And Singapore circuit breaker extension is expected and hopefully hence on 1st June 2020. 1st June 2020 is when Singapore's circuit breaker period is expected to end. And how long is the incubation period for coronavirus? It can go up to two weeks, uh, which is the general number. Obviously, there are a few cases that go much shorter and much longer. So two weeks is, or anywhere in the range of two weeks is what we will be accepting. And these are some of the countries that have remained infection-free as of April 2020. So there is the Comoros, Kiribati, uh, Lesotho, Marshall Islands, Micronesia, Nauru, North Korea, Palau, Samoa, Sao Tome, Principe. Is it Principe? Principe, right? Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm probably not, I'm probably going to butcher most of these names, but I'm still going to try. Solomon Islands, South Sudan. Tajikistan, Tonga, Turkmenistan, Tuvalu, Vanuatu, and Yemen. I think Yemen got uh, cases rather recently. So uh, I'm not too sure on that. So, so there's a the question countries. asking, there is a question from Sanka asking whether new is allowed. Hmm. I'm not too sure on new, uh, but probably I could, we could probably check it out and get back to you on that, Shankar. Yep. Right, and now we are going to go for the bonus round. Marcus, do you want to explain the bonus round? All right, so this is a special round where even if you are lagging behind, there is a chance for you to catch up, or even if you are already ahead, you could get uh, uh, a big lead over everyone. So if you go to the next slide, I'll explain the rules for the bonus round. Okay. Oh, right. there so here you That's wager your points. Uh, so it depends rule. on how many points you have. So the, how it works is that you, if say you've got 30 points and you wager all 30 points, if you get the next question correct, you'll get 30 points for that round. But if you got it wrong, you end up with zero points. Right? So you can wager from, from one all the way to the maximum number of points you have. So I would like everyone to add, uh, put in the trivia sheet, what is your 
wager score, wager points. You won in your bonus round. You see the wages coming in. Um, okay, almost everyone has their wager. Okay, so I'll carry on, yeah? Yep, everyone show right, hands. Bonus, Very good. Bonus, bonus round. And just saying, right, bonus round is only one question, and it will be based on the talk. So good luck to everyone. And this is the bonus question. What does today's speaker, Professor Cole Yenpin, think of bubble tea? What does today's speaker, Professor Cole Yenpin, think of bubble tea? Because if you remember at the end of the floor questions, Marcus asked him for one word responses to things. So there was uh, Singapore, climate change, bubble tea, and there was another one which I can't remember now. So what did he think of bubble tea? Take your photo and send it in to us. Yep. And update. Uh, grand total, please. Yeah, if you send it to us, uh, and while people are doing that, we are just going to carry on to the next slide where we're going to talk about what's happening next week. Right, Marcus? Uh, we'll announce the winner first, maybe. Oh, can do, yeah. Since that comes in. Yeah, unofficial winner because we have to check your answers. Huh? Yes, we'll announce the unofficial winner and we'll announce the official winner and uh, beneficiary that receives the funds on social media. So we'll just get, we'll just wait for Marcus yeah. to do that. So I see emails coming in. Yep, bonus rounds coming in. And please fill up the wager scores. So waiting for a few more teams to come in. Yep. Spike, um, Sinway. Who else are we waiting for? Ivan, R E L Rep. Trivia Anonymous, Fibbers. So the oh the answer we haven't given the answer. Okay, so the answer is. Yep. Severely lacking, severely lacking. So if you got the right answer, please add your wager points to your I think, total. Uh, Marcus, I think we can take lacking as well because we were asking for one word while he gave two. I think lacking should be fine. Sure. Yep, lacking is fine. So the highest right now is CG. Okay, I'm also updating something. Uh, I think earlier Shankar asked whether we can take new and um, from Wong Tech He, new is one of the countries not affected as of 30 April 2020. So, so we'll yeah, take it. yeah, we can take new as well. Uh, thanks for that. Thanks for the link as well. Okay, so I think we have an unofficial winner now, and that is Nasri with twenty six points. Yeah, oh, yep. well done, Nasri. Well done. Yeah, and congratulations. So his beneficiary is the Wildlife Reserve Singapore Conservation Fund, WRSCF. So we would uh, check your answers and everyone's, uh, and a sample of everyone else's one. And yep. once that is confirmed, uh, we will contact you and then we would um, make a donation to WRSCF with the trivia pot and yep. post the receipt out online. All right. Yep. Thank well you, done. everyone. Thank you. And before you guys go off, right, 
we just want to talk about what's happening next week. Oh, oh yeah, this is where you can submit your answers. And for next week, we have Siva, who is with us today, and he will tell us about what he's going to talk for next week's session. Hello, Siva. Hi, hi everyone. So, um, when I was asked to share a story, the organizers said, um, how about explaining why the authors turned up at Mustafa? So I said, sure, because uh, it becomes, uh, it'll be the story that will explain everything about authors in uh, Singapore. So I'm not going to talk very long. So we hope to have a lot of time for you to ask questions. And I'll invite in my students and some author watchers to come and answer questions too. Thanks to uh, Kanan and Marcus for organizing this. It was really interesting. Very brave of you to try this. Uh, <laughs> I could see you struggling through the trivia session, but you made it. Well done. Yep. Uh, and everyone was quite involved. I like the chat that was going on by the side. So good job. And see some of you at least uh, next week. All right. Thank you, Siva. Uh, and uh, that brings us to the end of this first session. Thank you for everyone who sat through with us, despite uh, us learning the ropes and me tripping over every single trivia question. Uh, thanks for all the suggestions as well, right? Feel free to drop us more suggestions on how we can do this better. Like I know that I've had numbers to the questions. I need to remember what questions I'm on and not get distracted, right? And probably we'll find a way to get through the trivia a lot quicker and like without having to stop every now and then to send the answers. Uh, looking forward to having you guys again next week. We are planning to do this every Friday at 4 p.m. Well, at least throughout uh, the circuit breaker period. And after circuit breaker, we might move it to a different day that's conducive for everyone because most of you will be going back to work uh, once uh, circuit breaker is over. So we'll be doing that. And I see a chicken over here. I'm just going to highlight this chicken while we... Uh -huh. Yes, that's, that's Ambu has been hiding all this while because she has these uh, unlikely companions who turn up and investigate everything that she, do, that she does. <laughs> That's adorable, right? Uh, thanks for joining us. <laughs> so, uh, right, guys. So we will see you next week. As usual, there will be a sign-up uh, sheet as well. So be on the lookout for it. And uh, thank you. And we hope you thanks, had everyone. fun. I would, uh, wait, session. before we go off, I would want to take a selfie of everyone, a wee of everyone. So uh, we get to remember every, the first session, right? So um, I'm going to take three shots because you guys are spanning three gallery views. So I'm going to say cheese three times, right? So Yeah, one, so try, try to get a camera on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, turn your camera on if you can. Yeah, turn your camera on so everyone tries to squeeze in. Okay, so first. We'll just... One, two, three. First shot. Uh, I'll do a second shot for the next page. One, two, three. All right. Um, I see some of you have families. That's great. Uh, last page. A lot of cameras which are off, but still. One, two, three. Excellent. And I see a leopard cat as well. Super. All right. Thanks for participating. We will be putting up the um, invitations and posters up online. So hopefully you get to see it. And we might send out the thank you email requesting for feedback and put a, a sign up link for the next week as well. So. Let us know if you have any uh, feedback regarding this and see you next week, hopefully. All right. See you guys. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend. And remember, stay safe and stay home.